When attendees come to Microsoft's Worldwide Partner Conference, they aren't having a new conversation that starts and ends at the event itself. The conversation has already started through a program called WPC365, a series of digital and social engagements that extend the dialogue throughout the entire year. Microsoft has invested in this digital content experience so that their attendees get more out of the live interactions once they're on site together. It's a brilliant way to make the impact of the event last all year long. I spoke with Microsoft's senior marketing strategist, Melissa Porter, about WPC, the 365-day digital journey around it, and how they scale their content outside of the walls of the live event itself. But before we go to the interview, we have a quick message from our sponsors. Welcome, Melissa. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Good, very good. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about your worldwide partner conference at Microsoft, and it's a huge event. Uh, why don't we just start there and tell us about that event and what's it, who comes and how big is it and where do you do it, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I have the privilege of working in the Worldwide Partner Group, and we um, host the Worldwide Partner Conference. It's in a different location every year. Um, this WPC, as we call it, in 2014 was actually in Washington, D.C. in July. Um, next year, we're hosting it in um, Orlando, July 12th through 16th. And it's a huge Microsoft event for our, our partner ecosystem, representing approximately 140 countries with over 15,000 attendees. Um, but we have taken that to another level and the digital experience and how we um, extend that before the conference, on site and post what we call WPC 365 is extremely important. Yeah, so 365 obviously it's a, a, a year long experience, yep. starting before the event, going yep. through the event and after. Can you kind of talk us through that journey, you know, maybe start before the event first? Absolutely. Um, one of the things is we really want partners to have, we want to have a dialogue. We want to be invited into their digital day all the time. And some of the things that we do are um, reaching them through our social channels. So we are, sent, we are seeding and sending content through a lot of the different social channels, be it Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And we're giving our partners and consumers relevant and timely content that helps them grow their business and what they need to make money. Um, so we're actually seeding and sending content every single day through our blogs. <clears throat> we have a new blog every single day. Um, and then we also host a number of other platforms. One of the platforms is our Connect platform, which is an authenticated environment which partners can actually collaborate, converse and discuss with each other and with Microsoft. So they can actually start the conversations virtually online before the conference. Um, things that they're interested in, our speakers go in there and start conversations, pre-reading, what do people want to hear about, so then it kind of tailors what they actually talk about at the conference. And then we have the on-site experience, so it's, you know, recording the sessions and connecting partners and so forth, and then again we repeat that post-conference. So when you talk about content, how do you, how do you make it authentic and not feel like it's a marketing message, you know, to, to keep people engaged, because that's a big problem for marketers today in social media. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, that that is so true. One of the things that we've done is really set a very high quality bar on the type of content that gets published through all of our channels. Um, and I have to admit, in prior years, for us, it was a bit more transactional and pushing it out, and we didn't really have a quality bar at all, and it did become a bit marketing-ish. And you know, it wasn't resonating. But what we've done is we've done an inside out and outside in content approach. And what I mean by that is we are curating content throughout the organization and we work and we different product groups or business groups that, that have a message that they want to send to the partners. And they'll say, oh, we need to send this message to the partners. And we say, uh-huh, great. What's in it for a partner? And I say two things. Why should they care? you know, and how, the, how is it going to help them make money? Unless it has that partner value proposition, it doesn't hit our quality bar and it doesn't get published. How does the digital experience mesh with that live event? 
you know, to, to how does it connect people once they're there on site? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things that we hope is that people have started to adopt some of our social channels. Um, so that's kind of part of our strategy of starting, you know, at the beginning of the year, if you will, or 365, is that people start to uh, appreciate the content all year round on that Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or, or blogs or whatever the relevant channel is for them. So that when they get on site, they're, they're consuming the same channel. One of the other things that we do is that we know not everyone can come to our event and we don't want to exclude um, partners who need to know about some certain messages. So we actually live stream a lot of our content as well. We look at the best um, sessions and the best speakers and we make sure that their discussion does not stop at the event. We make sure that they are signed up to continue having those conversations while if it's in Connect and a blog series, so then they can provide ongoing updates to um, our, our audience, our attendees, so then people can find out what happens 30 days out, 60 days out, 90 days out, and then ramping up to the conference thereafter. Because, you know, the conversation is and the event is one moment in time. Right. It is not, we need to be able to extend that conversation and being, and having a digital platform or digital experience really allows us to extend the conversation and extend the experience. If there was something that you learned coming out of, say, your last show, that just a key learning, something you wish you'd known before going into to architecting this program, is there something you could think to share with our audience as we part? So many learnings. <laughs> um, I think for us is, um, to be honest, it's really keeping it simple. I think that is really, it sounds um, quite obvious, um, but as any person who, who manages and coordinates events knows that the back end is a labyrinth of technologies and systems and tools and people. But at the forefront, we need to make sure we're masking that so the attendee has one integrated, seamless experience and that for them, it does not matter what happens on the other side, it matters that, you know, their experience is first and foremost, and it's simple. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, yeah. well I'm sure you're doing um, some amazing things out there with your event. We would love to hear more from you in, in the future, but thanks so much for joining us today, Melissa, and we wish you the best at, uh, at your upcoming events. Thank you so much. Creating a lasting dialogue today takes focus, persistence, and an unending stream of authentic content. As you just heard, Microsoft builds an experience around their worldwide partner conference that spans the entire year. And for those of you that fear they might diminish their live audience by offering great content to a broader audience, Microsoft example shows us that this content helps scale the event and even drives audiences to future events. Thanks to Melissa Porter for joining us today, and I hope you'll come back and see us again here on EM All Access. Thanks for joining us.